Welcome back to the Shop Mini RC, everybody. I'm Ken, and today we're talking about chargers. This is a USB charger for a 2S battery. Actually, this one's for a 3S battery. Uh, and I always tell people whenever we do a review on a ready to run that comes with this kind of charger, they should always try to get a hobby grade charger. These chargers are good in a pinch. Uh, I wouldn't even say good, I'd say they're okay. These chargers are okay in a pinch but ultimately they're not ideal. You can't see the voltages of your batteries. You can't balance charge. Uh, they're supposed to, but you can't guarantee that it's balanced charging. And uh, yeah, I've seen them be dangerous. I've seen them catch on fire. I've seen them melt. Um, they're just not ideal. So really you want a hobby grade charger. So we are on Amazon. We snagged up this guy. This is the Hota D6 Pro. And one of the things that drew me to this is this right here it lets you charge your phone on top of the charger. Now, I know that seems maybe a little gimmicky, but honestly, we always have our phones sitting right next to us where we're charging. And so I might as well just throw my phone on the charger while it's charging, because we always need to charge our phone. Um, it gets less wires uh, off the desk, or gets more wires off the desk so we have less wires and stuff like that. So we're excited to check this out, see how this uh, phone charger portion works. It's also a dual charger, so we can charge two batteries at once, smart charger, obviously. And so, yeah, I am excited to check it out. Like I said, we snagged this guy off of Amazon. There's a couple different sellers on there, but we'll put a link down in the description uh, from where we got it. And uh, yeah, that link is an affiliate link. So we do get a little commission from Amazon, but it gets you, doesn't cost you anything and it helps support the channel. And it, you have the convenience of the link down there if you want to check it out. So like we have some adapters here already. It's like our power cable, most, most likely. And we'll dive into this guy. We'll go into all the different features and whatnot. And um, yeah, it's got some weight to it. It's also small. It's smaller than I thought it would be. In the photo, I thought it was kind of a, a bigger charger, but once the box showed up, I was like, man, that, this is actually pretty small and nice and compact. So I dig that. A little different than what's on the box. The box showed uh, black with a gray wheel, but this guy's more gray with a red wheel, which is what the picture showed on the Amazon. I'll put the picture over here uh, for the Amazon listing. But yeah, it's got our balance ports right there. It's not an external board, which is kind of nice. Uh, again, less wires because a lot of uh, chargers have an external balance board. They plug in and then your balance cable plugs into that board. But this is nice that it's uh, as simple as that. I kind of wish it came with uh, some more adapter cables. This is all it came with. What am I doing here? It's our plug and then this little adapter here, two of them. What are they? Let's see. This is a, an XT60 to an XT30. So there's at least that. Um, you almost always have to get the adapters you need anyway for a charger or for batteries that you run. So eh, I guess it's not a huge deal. It just would be nice to have come with a, a couple adapters for kind of the standards that a lot of people use. Although this is pretty common. This is pretty common, but I'm not gonna worry too much about that. Here's all the specs. If you wanna check out the specs, it's like it's uh, 325 watts. DC, 200 watt AC, all the different types, all the way up to 6S, obviously. USB port 5 volt. So if you <laughs> wanted to use your charger to run a USB to charge your battery, you could. Not that you really want to do that, but if you want to charge your phone from there, you could. There's also a USB port there. This is, uh, this is the update port though. So it looks like we can update the firmware. All right, we just need to get in here and look at this thing. It's got a little plastic on the, no, no plastic on the screen. Okay, no plastic on the screen. So you can see right here, it's a 200 watt AC and a 650 watt DC at 15 amps. And then our AC in is 100 to 240 volts with our DC in at 6.5 to 30 volts. So you can use all sorts of different size batteries, voltage batteries to uh, power this guy. If you're out on the, out in the field, out up in the mountains, crawling or whatever, and you don't have a power supply, you can just you know plug in one, bring a larger battery, plug it in and charge your smaller batteries, which we do all the time when we go to comps and out at events where we don't have power or camping and stuff like that. We'll bring some larger milliamp batteries, just some two S's or three S's, and then we can power this guy with that and uh, charge all of our smaller batteries. Pretty, pretty convenient. 
Um, and then again, you can even charge your phone off of it. So, and obviously with the wireless. One of the cool things about this is we uh, we run a Noble Pro, an MB4 Pro, and it's got wireless charging in the battery pack. So while we're at the racetrack, we can just throw our transmitter on top of the charger while we're charging our car batteries and also make sure we always have our base charged, which is gonna be awesome. So that's a huge reason as to why I was interested in this guy. Um, also just having a dual charger is always nice. If you've never had a dual charger, it's it's definitely a huge convenience. You can charge two different kinds of batteries and um, twice as fast. And so it definitely helps save time. They even, I believe Hoda also makes a four port charger. So you can charge four different batteries. I know this brand is very popular with drones. A lot of the drone guys run Hoda chargers. So definitely kind of proven. Uh, there's some more information on there if you're interested. Uh, but yeah, definitely proven. It's got a nice big fan in the back. Anyway, all right, let's go ahead and power this guy up and uh, see what all the features are. Hold on, what was that? Let's do that again. I want to see what that startup screen was. It looked like an FPV headset on an anime girl. All right, well, there we go. Pretty, uh, simple plug it in we go we're on uh the fan is already on which is interesting i wonder if that's going to stay on the whole time uh it's not too loud but i would prefer if the fan only came on when it needed but we'll see we'll see um all right i guess we can start diving through some of the menus here now i've got one of these uh crazy adapters here so we're going to go ahead and use that and just uh try charging one of our small batteries got this guy here it's just a little 2S uh, from our Red Cat Ascent 18 on the Red JST. So I'll plug that guy in. We've already got our total voltage, and then we can plug in our balance cable here. It goes 1S to 6S, 1S to 6S. Should just drop right on there, yeah? Yeah, there we go. No? Hold on, what's going on here? This way. Yeah, that way. All right. Now we can see the range of our cells. So our cells, if you had like a 4S or a 6S, it would show you your lowest cell to your highest cell. So right now we're at 3.97 and 3.975. So you can choose your channel by clicking on this and you can see it slides it over. This is channel one, slides it over. This is channel two. You can see channel one's over there. Both of them, channel two, okay? So we are now inside our channel two and you can see our voltage. We're on standby because we're not doing anything, but it gives you all the stats, our voltage. And I believe once you're charging, you can see resistance. So when single click on our wheel here and you'll be able to go in and set your battery types, your charge type uh, power supply. So if you wanted this just to be a continuous power supply, you can do that, your charge, discharge, uh, I believe this is extra discharges for like if you want to kill a battery. So if you've got a LiPo that you want to completely discharge all the way, that's what that's for. Your storage charge, uh, which is what you should always charge your batteries at if you're going to let them sit for longer than a couple weeks. Some people say even if it's longer than a week. Balance charge, which you should always balance at. Actually, I believe the charge here always balance charges. And then this is just like a rebalance of some kind. And then sync charge lets you use both ports to charge a single battery. Uh, you're probably only going to use that if you're charging it like a huge battery, like 20,000 milliamp battery with you need 20 amps or something like that. Most people aren't going to use that, but that is a cool feature that's there. So all the different tasks, we'll just do a regular charge here, click into select, and then you've got your battery types, smart battery, high voltage, LiPo, Lion, all that stuff, all the way down to regular Eneloop batteries nickel metal stuff like that so we're on a regular lipo here our cell voltage for it's going to depend on the type of battery you're charging because high voltage obviously will go will go higher volts but this will allow you to overcharge if you wanted uh your cell counts okay i'm curious what would happen i assume if we went to like 6s and tried to start it it's gonna error no it did not interesting Okay, let's stop. That's interesting. I'm surprised it didn't uh, error out and say that uh, we did not have, hold on, 
It's on 2s. Let's try that again. 6s. Start task. No. It looks like it's... Uh, Looks like it drops back down to 2s. I assume it's not putting power or anything to the, or you know, pulling power from these, uh, because tech, I guess from what I understand, the balance cable actually just it pulls power out of the cells. It doesn't actually add power in. So when it's trying to rebalance a battery, it just takes the highest volt, uh, voltage cell once it hits that max, and it'll pull power out while the other cells are charging. So uh, just a little tidbit of info there. Let's see, if we, uh, we can go all the way up to a crazy amperage, 15 amps, and all the way down to probably 0.1. If you don't know, uh, you should charge a battery at 1C, which is one times uh, the this formula, which is basically moving the decimal over. So if we have a 750 milliamp, we should charge at 0.75 amps, okay? so. 0.75 amps for a 750 milliamp. If you have a 1000 milliamp, you charge at one amp. Um, now, if you have a 2C charge rate battery, you can double that. So you could charge a 1000 milliamp battery at two amps. Um, but usually these smaller batteries, like this little guy here, this is a 350 milliamp. You should be charging that at 0.3 or 0.4 ish. But this says it can have up to a 3x or 3 times 3C charge rate. So theoretically, you could charge this at 0.9 or maybe even 1 amp with no issues. All right, and then we can start our task. So once we've started our task, uh, we'll go ahead and just charge this guy at 0.7, 0.8. And we'll get our charging going. Gives you your amps, gives you your milliamps that have been charged, your voltage, your time elapsed, and then each cell's voltage. And then we should be able to rotate this to our resistance. Resistance is the internal health of the battery. The greater the resistance that cell has, uh, the, the more wear and tear, I guess, that the battery has gone through and the less uh, reliable the battery becomes. I guess that's the easiest way to put it. Okay, and then we can see our temperatures, voltage, all that good stuff. I assume this is if we're charging multiple batteries. It says zero pieces. Not sure what that's about there. Something else that I want to look at, let's go ahead and go back, is when we're in here, you can just long press this. Oh, and it stopped it. If we long press it again, we can get into our task parameters, system settings, all that good stuff. So task parameters have your safety timer, your max capacity, your end current and trickle charge. Um, so your safety timer is going to basically be if a battery has been charging for longer than 100 or 2400 minutes, the charger will just shut off. Uh, same with max capacity. If the charger has put out more than that milliamp hours, uh, then the charger will shut down. And you can set these to what you typically uh, experience with the batteries you run. If you know that you usually only charge a 5,000 milliamp battery, then you might want to set this to 10,000 or 6,000, somewhere in there. Uh, and then the battery, the charger will shut down if your battery ever goes over that as a safety precaution. Like if there's something wrong and, and it just feels like, well, it's not reaching max charge, so the charger keeps charging and it never fully, it's never actually hitting that max charge, then the charger will eventually shut down using this max capacity. And same with the timer. Like if a battery usually only takes 10 minutes to charge, but it's been charging for hours, this will shut down eventually. Um, end current and trickle charge. I'm not sure what end current is. I believe that has to do with your max capacity um, and whatever the voltage is. Uh, again, I'm not 100%. There, there's no manual that comes with it, unfortunately, so I'm not sure. And then trickle charge usually is when the battery is just sitting on there, it will put the tiniest bit of charge in there. Um, usually on nickel metal stuff to use for nickel metal. I don't know about LiPo though. System settings, uh, English, your max input, your minimum voltage, LCD backlight. Let's see what that uh, changes there. Oh yeah, it gets pretty dark. The wireless charging on, you can turn that on and off. Our volume, we definitely want to turn that low. Okay, that's good. You can also turn it off. We'll leave it low for now. Completion signal, so it'll either 
complete and give you a signal one time, or it'll repeat until you click on it. Um, we'll leave that on. You can change your device name. So that's cool. Click and hold should back us out. Yep. Continuous mode. So this is a cool feature. This, uh, if you turn this on, basically once you've charged a battery, you can unplug the battery and then plug in another battery, ideally of the same, you know, they have the, need the same settings and it'll just start charging the next battery. So you don't have to go through and hit your settings and start charge over and over. Just once you hear a battery's done, you can unplug it, plug in the next battery. But again, it's going to use the exact same settings you already had. So definitely don't plug in a small, a smaller milliamp battery. Uh, you're charging at five volts and then plug in one of these guys with a continuous charge on. That would be bad news. Um, and then average AC power. I'm not sure what that does. If you know what this does, let me know in the comments below. You can also calibrate your channel one and two, uh, system self-checking, factory reset. This will reset all of your factory settings. System info, this is where you see your hardware version. Uh, I'm not sure what LD is. Your software version, this is basically your firmware. This is the most recent firmware. I did go and check online. Uh, 1.0.51 is the most recent, and then the serial number. And there's the website. The website, this website isn't all Chinese, so you'd have to translate it. Um, but most browsers can do that nowadays. And back, simple as that. So again, you gotta choose a channel, click, make sure we're on the right amperage, start our charge. So just to go through this stuff again, there's your weight, 575 grams, your dimensions, uh, 108 by 105 by 76. Uh, screen is 320 by four, or yeah, 320 by 240. All your different max temperatures, your USB output is gonna be a five volt, uh, 2.1 amp. And then your discharge rates and all that good stuff. Okay, guys. So we're going to probably go use this. Uh, we're racing tomorrow night. So I'll take it with me ten tomorrow night and we'll use it. And then I'll come back and give you my final thoughts. Should be good, though. It's pretty straightforward, simple. Uh, I always tell people you want to have a good charger. And I think this is a very good option so far, just from what I can tell. The only thing I'm not liking so far is that the fan is always on. And that it doesn't come with a, ma a manual at all, which is odd. Um, you can find it online, though. Just Google search D6 Pro English manual and you'll find it. Uh, there's lots of good info in there. But there have been updates since that manual was produced, I believe. And um, so there are some of the features on here that may not be in that manual. You just have to look at the firmware update notes, patch, no <laughs> patch notes, basically. So one other thing I kind of wanted to show is uh, this charger also... If it detects that you have no balance cable in, you can go in and try to charge the battery. And it's going to ask you, perform task without balance, LiPo 2S. And you can say yes. And so that's interesting because there are some batteries that I've seen where they don't have a balance cable uh, or the they're smart batteries and there's a chip inside the battery supposedly that helps balance those like i think some of the spectrum batteries actually have a chip in the battery and that chip balances it takes in the, the current and it allows it to balance um from what i've heard but you can't charge those batteries if your smart charger uh requires you to have a balance cable so the nice thing about this is you can go ahead and charge a battery without the balance cable which means it's going to strictly charge it based off the lead and it's going to put equal power to all the cells which means if you do have a cell out of balance it could damage your battery so just be aware of that but it is nice to be able to do that to sometimes bump a cell up or like i said you're trying to charge a battery where you don't have a balance cable or it's a smart battery um, and you're just trying to get power into there so super nice that you can do that so i'm going to stop that though get this guy plugged back in and yeah, we'll go ahead and start it. Oh, one other thing I want to mention, because I mentioned earlier the difference between balance and uh, storage charge. Balance just allows you to basically set the voltage you want it to balance to. So it'll balance all the cells to that voltage. Essentially, it's the same as storage charge, because on the storage charge, you can also adjust what voltage you want it to storage charge to. But it's essentially going to just make sure all the cells get balanced at that voltage uh, and regular charge also balance charges it always balance charges uh, if you've got your balance plug plugged in which is the purpose of that notification if you don't have your balance cable plugged in it lets you know hey you're not going to balance charge um, but yeah so 
like I said here we have our resistances and hopefully those will pop back up I didn't don't think I showed those while it was charging once it charges a little bit it'll show your internal resistances a note about internal resistance it's going to be based on the battery like every battery is going to kind of have different internal resistances so some people when they're super serious about tracking that stuff they label on their battery what the starting internal resistance was when the battery was brand new and then they check it over time and you can see over time uh how high the resistance gets the higher the resistance again that means the more wear on the battery the more heat that's going to generate the more damage to the cells as you use the battery occurs so um and the the less output you have right so if you're into racing and you want the highest voltage output the highest discharge rate uh you need to have the lowest uh, res internal resistance on that battery to get you those things as the battery gets older that rises and then that performance decreases so just something to keep in mind so we're at 14 and 16 on this guy right now. Again, we could take another battery, plug it in, it'll have totally different internal resistances. But again, ideally, the lower, the better. All right, we're gonna go ahead and let this finish charging, and then we're gonna pack this guy up and uh, take it with us tomorrow. Okay, looks like we're done. Still got some voltage going to it though. I wonder if that's the trickle charge or some amps, you know. And it should keep alerting us because I believe the setting is repeat the alert, but mm, yeah, there it goes again. Alrighty, cool. All right, we will uh, try to use it tomorrow night. I'm kind of curious if you can charge on just, let's grab this battery. This is a battery that doesn't have a lead. It's just a balance. Can we charge it like that? Hmm. What if we did a balance charge to 420 volts? Nope. That's unfortunate. That would be a cool feature if you could charge strictly through the balance cables. Um, although, like I said, I believe that the balance actually is only drawing power out. So that's why most of the time when we have these, we use adapters. Let's see, I've got an adapter here that plugs in. And then you also plug in your balance. And then on the cable itself, it drops it down to just a balance cable charge. So we can run it like this. And there we go. Makes sense. Just figured I'd try though. All right, we're using it. We got three, we got these guys in parallel. We are charging this guy we're separate. Done. Oh, they're calling me to race.
Make that seven seconds. So it looks like it's working great. Mitchell with a 2250. We are definitely enjoying this little guy. I, I, uh, I really appreciate the charger on top, especially with the Noble, uh, the MB4 Pro that we have with the wireless charging in the base. Like that's huge for me. Um, it could be huge for you if you want a place to charge your phone or any other uh, accessories that you might have that are wireless, and especially if you have a Noble Pro, definitely cool. And then obviously the dual ports, definitely a time saver. It's got plenty of power. So again, we, we mostly do the minis. Uh, and everything's like 2 and 3S. I don't think I even own a 4S battery, um, but all the way up to 6S. So as we grow, it'll grow with us. I highly recommend getting a higher end charger no matter what. If you've got RCs and you run them a lot and you want to make sure you take care of your batteries right, a higher end hobby grade charger is 100% the way to go. And, you know... So when we first started, we'd buy a single charger. We've got some old school chargers and, and then we buy a second one and you end up spending twice as much money um, when you just don't buy the right thing, right? If you buy a uh, cheapy, you end up buying multiple times. So I just, I'm a big, I'm kind of a firm believer in, in buy once, cry once. Um, it just, you get the better better gear and you, uh, you don't have to spend as much money in the long run. You know, especially if you, even if you buy a nice charger, right? A single port charger, later you end up wanting to charge more or have your friend, you know, over and you guys want to charge your son or your wife or whoever. And then you end up taking forever to charge batteries and you're like, man, I just wish I had a second charger. You end up buying a second charger when you could have just started with a dual port to start. Um, I was almost tempted to get the four, but I don't, I really don't think, especially with the, how many chargers we, we have multiple chargers. So the four is not really something we need, but if you ever thought about it, go to the four where it's a four port. Um, it's probably worth it if you think you're going to charge a ton, right? Uh, but usually two is plenty. Plus, if you know how to charge parallel, uh, you can actually charge multiple batteries on a single port. Uh, I would highly recommend doing your research before doing that, though. But this will also do that. Just about any, you need that with any charger. You just got to do it, have it set up correctly. Anyway. Thank you guys for watching. Huge shout out to all of our channel members. These guys are awesome. They help support the channel. Let us do stuff like this. Um, and they get to see all these videos early before anybody else with no ads. And they get to see behind the scenes stuff. And they get extra entries into giveaways when we do that. And they get priority replies to comments. So if they comment, I see their comment first and I reply to it as we grow. We're not going to be able to reply to everybody. So we want to make sure we at least get the people that are supporting us the most. Um, and if you can't become a channel member, I totally understand. Huge support just through clicking that subscribe button. We'll put it right over there. You just click that subscribe button. Well, you subscribe down below, but there's, that's a 
button looks like. I don't know, whatever. Click the subscribe button. It's just a click for you, and it means the world to me. And then uh, also sharing this, even if you're not a subscriber, if you find that some video that we have produced is uh, something that'll help somebody else, share that video with them. That is the biggest thing that you can do to help support the channel is sharing our content. So we really, we really appreciate everybody that supports through uh, channel members, subscribing, sharing, even just commenting and interacting. We love that stuff. So uh, keep on doing it, guys. Like, subscribe, share, and hit that notification bell. Do all those things. And if you want to support also, we've got swag. We don't make any money on it, a dollar or two, but uh, yeah, it's there and you can check that out as well. All right. Get out there, build something awesome. Build a car, build a course, build a community, smash it, crush it, bash it, but don't break the expensive parts. It makes sure you take care of your batteries. Peace.